I call this meeting to order. Who is Araya? We'll find out in a moment. Okay. Hello. Hi. Who's Araya? Who says Araya? Identify yourself. Jenny's daughter. Whose daughter? Jenny. 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 Ah, okay. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Jenny. Oh, sorry. I thought you said right. Jenny. Oh, that's like, your daughter's right? Jenny. name. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't. I thought your daughters were too young to join, but uh, anyway. Hey, Rhea, can you turn a light on? We cannot see your face. Uh, or, or point yeah. it away from the window because yeah, the window maybe, is really bright. I can't do that. The window is drowning everything out. That's true. Okay. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're we'll be talking, not necessarily staring at each other. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for for um, joining this call today. We've had several requests from artists. We haven't had any events actually canceled but we've been given a variety of options from the Massachusetts Cultural Council in light of COVID-19 um, due to the many uh, postponements and the effect that this has on artists. We don't know what our budget is going to be like next year, um, but we um, do have the option to to give some payment to people this year who have, um, due to no fault of their own, been unable to put on the um, the events that basically pay their salaries and put food on the table. So we have a variety of options at hand. In some cases, I think it would be worthwhile to at least consider what we've heard from artists who have written to us about their plans. I can also tell you that the South County Senior Center director did get back to me. She says that they have postponed everything except Ed the Wizard is October 28th, so they're hoping that will happen on, on time. The other three have not been canceled, but there's one I can report to you on a couple of the requests that we've had. Um, Elementary school, their only event has been held, so they'll get that paid for as soon as somebody comes in the office and fills in the form. And the library events have been um, postponed. None have been canceled. The Friends of the Library have asked us if um, their events, summer events don't happen this year, does the money just get moved to next year? And so that's a possibility that we can offer. So in the Waitley Historical Society, we can talk about and Adelia can fill us in. Oh, Rena, thank you for joining. Hi. I'm sorry. Um, I've been blabbing away here and didn't see that you, you had joined. That's great. Um, Not a problem. My computer was being obstinate. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry about that. But anyway, so the, the spring... Festival did not happen, so I, I, those funds, I guess, go back in the kitty. But Adelia can um, give her feelings on that. Um, and also, um, there's the fall festival. Um, Adelia, has any decision been made by the historical society about the fall festival? No, not at this point. We have we're waiting to see what transpires with opening up. Okay, so... Could I ask um, one more question? There was also the Racial Justice Rising program, which right. was, was what, ha what happens, happened, whatever, <laughs> with that. Yes, I, I don't have a clue on that as to whether they've been doing these online. Um, so I can... I don't think so, but I don't really know either. I just, I haven't been getting any emails about it. I'm on their list. Um, oh, okay. So I assume okay. they've not been doing them 
and I don't know what their plan. I don't happen to know what their plans are. I haven't gotten an email regarding anything. Like right. That. I need to um, contact them to to find out. Um, but obviously, they get reimbursed after events happen. They usually wait till the end of the year, and um, so there may be an opportunity to give them less if only a few of their events have happened. Um, but we can we can take a vote on on that um so maybe it would be helpful to give an idea of what we're dealing with if i go through what we've heard from artists so far the first one we heard from was rona leventhal who um replied to a message we sent um on march 17th her message was a bit confusing she was asking us to allocate funds now um, rather than make artists wait. Our process, we can't really adapt because we have to get the form, get the signatures, and then most of the wait time is going into the town offices where the, the treasurer writes checks every two weeks and um, on a certain day, and then they need to be signed. So we can't rush that that process. But anyway, what she really meant was, can we pay the artists now because they shouldn't have to wait for their payment just because of COVID. So um, at that point, we hadn't been advised to do anything like that by the Mass Cultural Council. So we did nothing. Um, could I, Nancy, could I just pop up a level before we get into the weeds like that? Of course. Um, is there any reason we can't just give everybody the money? Good question. I mean, why wander through it on a case-by-case -case basis when this is like PPP, right? The, the, the people shouldn't be injured because of coronavirus. But, and even if it's an about, organization, even if it's an organization or an individual or an agency or whatever, um, they're not going to misuse the money. <laughs> You know, they, they, they can use it next year, they, whatever the case may be. And I'm just wondering if we can make a high level decision like that or whether there's some reason we can't. Okay, we've been given some leeway on, on paying in hardship cases. In some cases, the artists are postponed. Um, well, I mean, I'm not even thinking of hardship cases. I'm thinking of something like the racial justice rising case. I mean, these folks need the money. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll get their act together. It'll start happening. Our money will help them a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's they're not going to stop eating because we don't give them the money, but I'm sure right. they could use it. <laughs> so I, um, I guess um, the, the main, the, to me, the things to weigh down against is, we don't know how much money we'll get in the fall. It's likely to be less given this, um, the situation that the state is in that they're gonna expect everybody to take some of those cuts. Uh, and I know we're not a heck of a lot of money, so it's possible that we'll right. still get the same amount. So right. if we, let's say, um, were to do that at 100%, then we may not have that much for the following year and I don't really know where the right place is on that. If we're um, if we're the kind of organization who should be like a PPP, um, or if we should be a little more concerned about mm, I don't know conserving where we can. Uh, I I don't like I said I don't really know where I fall on that spectrum honestly. Yeah, well that's um, why I'm throwing the question out there. I'm I'm sort of trying to figure it out for myself too. <laughs> Yeah, um, in most cases, the artists haven't asked for a thing. I mean, Roger Tinknell had said he has the capability to do his event online. But of course, for the South County Senior Center, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because every senior doesn't have the capability to watch an online program. Well, actually, Roger, I talked to Roger about this, and he said that... Um, senior centers, his business has actually gone up during the coronavirus because senior centers are calling him to give online concerts. Oh, good. 
that the so, one that we funded. So I think there's a lot of cases where you know a lot of people are doing okay that we might think that might not be, and vice versa. Actually, there might be some people we think would do okay, but are having trouble. You know that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Well, and you know what you said about funding everybody if they're not having a problem. Um, well, that's a, that's a very good point. So that, I mean, that's one of the the possibilities, and and but I just I wonder about as a group here you know, with a finite amount of time and resources, if we really want to dive in and take on the case by case analysis of whether this person gets some of it and not all of it, this person gets nothing and that person gets everything. I mean, that that could be a a, a, a funding you know exercise as big as the original one. Yeah, I don't see, I mean, they, we haven't had that many requests. I think it's six. So if we, if you wouldn't mind, we could go through those six, perhaps. Um, These Adelia. are requests for payment? Um, requests for something. They're all a little bit different. Uh -huh. um, I think I would say for, um, for, uh, let's see, Roger, he hasn't asked for money. He just right. was offering right. to do something online and right. nobody right. took him up on it. Right. Um, the, so okay. I would say you, you think he's making mo more money. I That's think, I mean, Roger, you know, as a case by case basis, I mean, Roger's, I don't know if he's an exception, but I just know that he's not hurting right now. That's all I know. Right. And we, it, I mean, the hundred dollars we have isn't going to make it. Yeah, huge exactly. So I would say hold, I would propose hold off on him. Tim Von Egmont is another case. He asked if he could have money for, let's see, he wrote in January, um, no, March 17th, he asked if he could have money uh, for the preparation that he'd done. He prepared to perform for St. Patrick's Day for the Senior Center. Oh, yeah. That was canceled. They said, right. okay, do July 4th. So he probably prepared for that too. That didn't happen. Now they still are postponing him. The poor guy is only going to get $100. Can we give it to him? Yes, please, get, please give Tim the money. Right, exactly. Right. So, uh, shall, well, are there any other votes, um, different votes on that? Should we hold a vote all in favor? Uh -huh. The uh, protocol for a uh, online meeting is anything that requires a vote requires a roll call vote. A roll call vote. Okay. So, so, I so have to call the roll, mind. people can unmute yourself when your name gets called to give your vote. Great. Uh, but we um, should probably make it a motion. The motion on the floor seems to be to pay this one artist who's done all this prep work and has requested some payment. Jim Von and we could pay them in full as. I think is the motion that's on the floor. Is there a second? Can I, can I ask a question, if I may? Uh, mm -hmm. the, the people who have already requested something from us, if we make a vote now, um, if someone else in the future decides to write a letter to the board, do we readdress this later for them? I think we'll make a motion that will cover hardship cases um, or postponements, a, a second motion to um, postpone events at request to 2021 um, and hopefully what we vote on today will cover most of the the issues so we won't have to reconvene but um, oh, that would so be if we can do that yeah if we could make a blanket vote on something like that that would be great both things yeah so Joyce what is your vote on in terms of giving a hundred dollars to Tim von Egmond I'm in favor Okay. I'm in favor. Oh, oh, you have to call me, right? Sorry. George? <laughs> yes. Richard? Absolutely. Um, Jenny? Yes. Yeah. Adelia? In favor. Uh, thank you. And Rena? In favor. Okay, unanimous. Um, so he has to fill out a reimbursement form and we will pay him for that. And he still will do his event. So great. So we've taken care of Tim and Roger. Uh, Rona Leventhal, I started to talk about. We haven't heard from her lately. She's the one who is going to do a one hour program at the library for $585. Um, and I thought we awarded her $350. 
and we awarded her 350 but she would not do it for a penny less than 585 so the oh. library has to find the rest of the money uh, oh, i didn't know that okay yeah yeah um she implicated she kind of said that in her application but anyway oh yeah yeah you're right we haven't heard from her since march uh we could ask if we want to to have her complete a form and get payment for time spent already. I mean, she'd charge for some of it because apparently 85 of her 585 was for her time spent filling in the grant application. Um, but anyway, do, um, does well, is anybody- there, is, is there a way to address the what, what Rick talked about before? Is there kind of some sort of blanket statement we can make here along these lines of like, you know, if somebody does request payment this year because of preparation or blah, 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 whatever, there, I'm sure there's a few variations on the theme that, you know, we'll just give them the money. And, and in return, we're, when do we get to see their performance or, you know, right. so we, we're just giving them the money without any understanding of, are we ever going to see a product? That's I guess, correct. I guess I'd be a little more comfortable with doing that on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. I think some cases are a lot more transparent than others. Right. And someone who wants to charge us $85 so that we'll read their application, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of wondering about that. Um, it's called brain fog. Yeah. So that's just, sorry, sorry for busting in there. No, no, uh, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I have the, the same feeling. Um, I mean, if we decide we'll just give anybody who asks the money, does that obligate us to send out a blanket email to everybody to say, if you want money, we'll give it to you. No, I don't, I don't think really so. want to do that. No, I wasn't I gonna suggest that, I was just saying. We've had a few of these requests. Can we deal with them all at once? And then Rich's point was, well, what about the future? <laughs> and uh, do we have to reconvene in every case, you know, every time somebody sends us an email? Um, yeah, I, was I, just I was just trying to find a way to package it up in one nice vote. Yes, yeah, just Rina? ask a, a, a question? Sure. I am someone who does programs that I get paid for. I, I do artwork that I get paid for. And I don't see the fairness at all in giving some people the money that they're supposed to receive and hope that we'll get some kind of a, a return on that, our investment. But I don't understand why we want to just give money to those people who are um, astute, maybe is the word, enough to ask for it? And where is the fairness then to the other folks in not giving them or not notifying them of anything when you know full well that somehow in the grapevine, these folks will find out about it and be sorely disappointed? in us well I, I don't know i think people are in this business are good at advocating for themselves i think if we were dealing with people who were unable to advocate for themselves they would not have gotten the gumption up to write an, an application uh, and i'm not worried if word gets out on the grapevine that you can apply for uh, uh and they'll consider it on a case-by-case -case basis then that's fine we meet again big deal and they, you know, they, we, then we can consider them case by case. Um, I, I do worry about doing things as a, a blanket that just sort of puts the onus on Nancy and me and uh, oh, uh, why you can't have Julia. Um, and then it, it basically says, well, whatever we think we should sign based on whatever our discussion is, which really, you know, leaves us in an uncomfortable position. I agree. So, I'd be a lot more, I, I think, I don't, I don't worry about those, these folks not being able to advocate for themselves. Um, I'm more worried about uh, us being able to do something fairly 
uh, you know, just by email and so on. But yeah, you know, we can meet again. I don't have a problem with that. You guys are awesome. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a question? Of course, Richard. Again, I might not. I don't know whether you can hear me or not, but I can. Yes. All right. If we were to provide a, a percentage of the award, the original award that we're going to give to ever, and did it blankly across the board, so a portion of that we would keep for the following year, and a portion of that we would distribute evenly, whether it be twenty percent, forty-five percent, fifty percent, however that would work out. That would blanketly provide something for everyone to, but also retain some revenue for the following year because we don't know what we're going to get, what's going to be awarded for them next year. And it would provide some funds available for some kind of opportunities in the future. Uh, and this way, because most of these people aren't going to be providing any service whatsoever because right. of the circumstances, not, but not their fault, obviously, but we should be able to be considerate enough to provide them for something to, because of the circumstance, but obviously since we're not getting something in return, in most cases, we should be able to retain something for the future and they can apply again for those funds. And we may end up with additional funds. I don't know if we can, add, if we can pool what we have left into the following year and then yes. add additional funds. Yeah, I appreciate that. In terms of like 20%, 20% of $100 isn't really going to make much difference to to most of the artists. And a lot of these grants are only $100. Another way to consider it is, when was their program supposed to be? Like Ed the Wizard, his is October 28th. Maybe it'll happen, but he hasn't had to wait for money that he was counting on to feed his family. So, in the but in the case of Tim Von Egmond, he was. So... We kind of, I think, have to look at that. The summer music festival, we got a, re a question about that, whether the money goes to 2021 if it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, if, if the Friends of the Waitley Library thought that these artists are going to starve if they don't get their money by the end of the summer, then, you know, they should pay them and ask us for reimbursement. But anyway, um, I think timing is important, and I just felt that what the South County Senior, Senior Center was doing with Tim Von Eggman was unfair because he had to prepare for a couple of shows that didn't happen, and now they're still expecting him to prepare another one. So, so that was why. If I can ask. What is the what? What's in preparation? What does he do for preparation? Well, he's a he's a singer, and he had to choose songs and make arrangements and sing pr practice singing them for you know St. Patrick's Day related songs and then do July 4th related songs and then I don't know what holiday they're going to have them do next but he had to find research songs choose them arrange yeah. them practice not them a, that's not a lot a of work time preparation right right that's what I call it. yeah he, preparation it's research etc so for no pay but anyway we we voted on Tim Von Egmond but um Sarah Clay is rescheduled for September um if the town hall and library are open then that'll be fine and then John Root just asked if his could be extended to 2021 so that's something to that maybe we can consider on a blanket basis. We've had two, uh, two questions about 2021. Um, but there are two different entities I just wanted to remind people. John Root is an artist who did his own, he's not an artist, he's a um, naturalist, but anyway, he did his own application to do something at the library. The Friends of the Library are nonprofit in and of themselves who have a budget and um, they have a blanket amount to cover a number of performances by different artists. So, so it's kind of apples and oranges. John Root right. doesn't seem to be asking for money. He just wants to know if it doesn't happen this year, can he do it next year and get paid? And so that sort of, that's like a, we could make that into a general motion. Yeah, um, I like that. Let's do that. Yeah. So, so if I understand it correctly, we know that the money will roll over, that we, anything given, that doesn't get spent. That gets just, so everybody's really clear on that. So what we would be doing is we'd be sort of saying, well, our approval from last year 
we're guaranteeing that that approval will go into the fall so that some of the rolled over money will be committed um, if we vote in favor of this. I, I mean, I just wanna reword it and make sure everybody understands what we're, what we're doing. So we're, we're just um, a, affirming a prior commitment into the future. Right now, we wouldn't have to, um, we wouldn't have to commit to that, but it would be for a performance that's in 2021. Right. Right. Assuming that the organization they're going to do it with. And so there's a, there's a few places where, oh, if something doesn't work out, yeah, their next application is not going to look the same. Um, so do they, but so the, is this money flagged for next year? So they don't even, they don't even have to apply again. Is that the right, point? Which is a benefit to them. No, oh, oh, that's great. Right. And they don't have to reapply. Um, we How will we know just re How will we know? Well, it's because either. like there's going to be some people who applied and they're never going to do that performance. Right? We yeah, need right. some way to know that someone is like, yes, I applied. It got postponed into 2021. And here I'm going to do it in 2021. And here's my, I mean, we, we might need a little addendum on their old application. Just the fact that we did approve it so kind of brings them to the front of the line. I don't think we should tie up our money with folks who aren't willing to at least get back to us and say, no, I thought yeah, we were talking about 2021. Back up, Joyce. The, I thought we were talking about two cases and maybe another one of people who have requested postponement to 2021. I and thought we were just, talking about a blanket statement. A blanket right. statement for people who have requested yeah. a transfer. Upon request, and so there could be requests after oh. this meeting, which would also be covered if they say that's what they want to do, we'll say, okay. Um, and yeah. we just need to then encumber the money. So you're giving the treasurer mm -hmm. the uh, um, permission, blanket permission upon request to encumber funds for 2020 grants that are said to be used in 2021. Right. Um, I, I would be more comfortable if those people also had to be in touch with us by right. the next deadline. Yeah, that's they, fine. They, they don't no, necessarily need to date. reapply. Coming but, up with a date for 2021 or whatever, that would be good. Yeah. I mean, if we, right. I, I think they, they ought to send something in, uh, even if it's just a carbon copy of their previous application with the update of when this is, when they're planning to have it in 2021, et cetera. Um, okay, um, and Rich, you had a question. Yeah, um, could they reapply next year, knowing that they already, by applying, by reapplying, they already received the funds from 2020 in 2021? Will it also give them the opportunity for us to reevaluate, see if we can provide additional funds if requested for them? Because some of those people, we obviously we didn't give them all the, the funds that they requested. They could request the additional funds, and it may open the door for them to have not only the funds from this year, but additional funds for the pro for the preceding year or for the year they were applying for. And this way they have to apply. They'll keep in touch with us through the application. That application gets uh, recognized as one that they've already been approved the previous year and we have awarded a certain amount of money from the previous year. They have the opportunity to apply for additional funds. We may or may not give it to them, but we will give them the money that they applied for this year. So they are guaranteed in that application process money from this year that they didn't receive this year for the following year's performance. And if they want to apply for additional funds, they can. It's subject to our approval, but at least they have to go, they go through a process to ask for it again, and they know that they will get that. They may get more, but which gives them the interest to be able to apply for additional funds. Yeah. Is that unreasonable? Does sounds reasonable um, to me. Okay, yeah, I think different from what we we're talking about, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and we can worry about that next year. The thing to keep in mind is a lot of these artists perform at both the library, the senior center, other places. So you know, it wouldn't be surprising if, say, Tim von Egmond um, did his performance in 2021 for the hundred dollars that we're giving him now and he also was hired to do something at the Waitley Library or with the friends of the Waitley Library um, etc and some of these people we we gave a grant to one guy to do 
two performances, one at the library and one at the senior center this year. So I don't see any problem with them requesting um, another grant for right. 2021. Right, right, right. exactly. Right. But yeah. we can look at that in 2020. I mean, right, for, at the end of this year, if we have any money to give away. My, my point was in, try, in an effort to try to create fairness and be able to be considerate to the artists, we can, you know, even though the circumstances don't allow them to be able to provide the performance this year in most cases, um, those who provide performance can get the, the grant. Those who are unable to provide performance because of circumstances beyond any of our controls have the grant money for the following year. And their way of getting that grant money is to apply for a grant a second that year. And then they are guaranteed money from this year to be added to that grant. And, and we can also add additional funds if uh, we have them. We don't know if we're um, well, technically... It's not adding money to the grant. They are getting separate grants grant, in that case. Yeah. But they get in touch with us by, by, by applying. Joyce had mentioned that she wanted them to stay in touch with us so we could make sure yeah. that we provide yeah. them with something. But if they apply again next year, that kind of opens a door for that conversation for them to get this year's grant. Right. Now, in, t in terms of keep staying in touch with us, it's kind of up to the entity that asked them to apply. Like there were the four events at the Waitley Library and according to Cindy, all have been postponed except for, the, yeah. Um, and the same with the Senior Center. Um, so it may be that they want to postpone them to 2021 if they have to. Um, but yeah, the artist and the entity would have to decide together. So I think we can just ask the entity, are they going to do this in 2021? And they can say, yes, they've all agreed. That's um, so I wouldn't have to ask each artist. Right. Okay. So do we so, have, is there a motion on the, there's, is there a hovering motion on the, on the table here that we wanted to vote on? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I, I want to make sure that when we get to the fall, we're not, kind of um, in, in, a, in, a, in a state of confusion about what to do. You know, we get an application from someone whose performance was postponed from 2020. And the, so we, you know, reconsider all those proposals. And if they had a proposal in and identify it as such in the fall, then we're, we're sort of committing ourselves to saying, well, say it's a hundred dollar grant that this one that was postponed from 2020 is getting this $100 grant, but it won't really be the same event and kind of, as Richard kind of mentioned it, it could be that it's an event where we'd want to fund it at a higher level and stuff like that. So I think I'd like to just make, phrase it so that we're not tying our hands in knots in the, in the fall. Um, and that I, I think Rich's idea that you know being in touch with us in the form of a grant application is an appropriate way to be in touch with us uh, as far as funding is concerned, so that we can basically tell artists that we will use your grant from last year and the event being postponed in our decision in the fall for funding in a positive way, such that if your event from 2020 was effectively canceled or postponed into 2021 that yes we're inclined to fund that in 2021 um, but we we probably shouldn't tie our hands any more than that so I guess in the form of a motion I would move that we tell those who are in touch that um, we are inclined to fund those things that are postponed into 2021 in our 2021 uh, grant funding and that, that they're, they're gonna have that priority. And that's really about all we can promise them. Right? Well, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure why we can't promise them the, that we will honor 2020 grants for events that are postponed until 21. I think that's what we're doing. Well, no, you said no. You're, you're, you're giving it a qualification that we probably will. If they- oh, Okay, I didn't mean that. to make it sound like it was a probably. 
I meant right. to make it sound, I mean, the, we can always decide to change the amount higher, but we would right. not change it lower. Well, right? I, I think what Nancy said made sense. If they want more money, then they're applying for new additional funds. That would be another grant, right? That would be a separate grant. But I think that we can offer something to the people we already gave grants to in the form of they don't have to go through the process of a full application again. They simply need to agree to carry out the grants that we've already funded. Yeah, yeah that was my... Wait, let's be really clear about what they have to do then. Do they have to just resubmit their old grant? I don't even think they need because to resubmit Because then we don't no. know. Right, because then we don't know who from this year is really intending to do it in 2021 and who is just canceled and they're not really postponing into 2021. No, I understand. That's a great point. And I agree that if we're, what we're talking about now, which is different than what we talked about before, we're talking about honoring the grants for events that are postponed. Mm -hmm. And I think we should make that as simple as possible. They don't have to do a full application again. They simply need to commit that they they want to carry out their 2020 application in 21. And I think we need a little more detail. I think if, they, it's like like a, if this is a spring festival thing, that I'm planning to do it at the spring festival 2021, blah, blah, blah. Or if it's the fall festival, or if it's the okay, senior so we center. we need a date. We need, we need a little bit more information from them. So why not have them resend their old grant application? It's not like they have to write anything new with a note. You know, we, I think we need something in hand because it's gonna get confusing next October when we're trying to sort through all of these. And we've got someone, well, we, we offered them a, an extension, but I haven't heard anything back. We don't know if they're trying. You know, no, it, I, 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 don't I wanna want to make it really clear. I agree with you. I think we need confirmation from them that they actually have the intention. I think they need to, they, they all are, had some date in hand. Those dates are gone. So they need to have a new date approved by whoever the host is. But right. I and think having, the, yeah. The, and having done cultural council grants myself in the past, they are not onerous. That online system is really easy. It may um, be easy, but it's, it's something that we can give people to make it as simple as possible. Because yeah. on, on that point, I'm, I'm not going to agree, but we can proceed without me agreeing. Can it be as simple as an email confirmation? And I wasn't even going to go directly to the artist, but I will do it if need be. I was depending on the Waitley Library, for example, in the South County Senior Center, if they've postponed things to 2021, please send us their schedule and we'll encumber the funds for those events to happen in 2021. But if that's not mm -hmm. sufficient, we can go to the artists themselves. Would that not be enough rather than going through instead of 30 applications, 50 applications next year? I if, if you think it's, it's manageable, then, then that's fine, but it's a lot of work for you. To get emails from people? Yeah, and keep them straight. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any problem with that at all. Okay. And Nancy, if you need help, I'll help. Thank you, Rena. It's actually pretty simple. Um, yeah. So yeah. then we changed the motion to yeah, what does the motion say now? <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know anymore. We better remove it. Upon um, written confirmation from sponsoring entities and artists of um, postponement to a specific date in 2021 for their events, we will encumber the 2020, their 2020 grant to... 2021 without uh, an additional grant application. Sounds good to me. It's awfully long and I didn't write it down, but I have the recording. I guess I can get it <laughs> off of that. Well, that sounds good, Nancy. Okay, thanks. I'll so, 
Uh, thank you. So um, roll call vote, um, Joyce. Uh, I'm confused, so I'm going to say abstain, even though I'm sure it's going to pass. Should we no. go through we your... Don't, I, do, I do not want to hold things up. Okay. Uh, Rich? Um, could you... Sorry. <laughs> okay, I think we have too much confusion here. Let's let's um, knock off this. I'm trying to understand the process, so we, if I can clearly understand the process, I can clearly... We, uh, clear conscience, make sure that I understand that it, the process works. The process works for everybody equally across the board. Okay, and so I, what Nancy said was that. that if the sponsoring organization contacts us with a new date for the pro proposed event yeah. in 2021, that we will honor, you used the word encumbrance, we will honor the commitment we made in the 1920 grant cycle. Okay. There's no other paperwork or, uh, that needs to be done in order to make sure that award goes forward. Just to, just what they've done already is fine. And then an, an agreement with an email is would be more than sufficient to be able to provide them with the money. Right. An email confirmation um, with a date that it's supposed to take place. Um, I, I would think there was the, the, Nancy said one slightly different thing, which was either the sponsoring organization or the right. artist. Yeah, thank right. you. Either I'm one emails her and asks for a postponement with a date. The answer is yes, we'll give it to you. Right. I mean, the sponsoring organization is the one that gives does the date. Um, they decide the dates they want these events in in. Um, coordination with the artist. So if we have a list of dates from a sponsoring organization and their word that the artist says they will do it, then that's enough right. for me personally. But that's fine. At point, right. Okay. At what point does the money get awarded to the artist in a situation like that? When the artist requests it? After, After the, the performance, right? After the performance, they request After it. After the performance, right. In 2021. Unless you know, in the case of Tim Von Eggman, somebody else comes forward and says, I just can't put food on the table. Is it possible for me to get some of the money this year? Yeah, this, so, that's, I, a, separate, that's, that's a case different funny. from this one. Right. Yeah, that is different because yeah. he actually said, I did the work. I did a lot of that work. He didn't just say, right. hey, I just need money. So that's, I think there's, there's a difference there. So, so I think the simple, I think to answer my sense of your, answer to your question, Rich, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're basically just allowing the process, the normal process of running the show, requesting the check into 2021. In other words, doing next year what they would have done this year, and that's basically the only difference. Right, and if they want to apply for an additional grant in 2021. That, that's a whole different ballgame. Okay, yeah. And um, can I add, uh, just just before you take the vote, I, I think we should, after we've done the vote, we should run this by the folks at the state level, because it just occurred to me, I don't know what we have to report back to them about our funding for the, do we have to report anything back to the state? They just said that we have to encumber the funds and they provided okay. a, a spreadsheet to put it in. We don't have to okay. report it to them. They've given us um, a, okay. this alternative. Okay, okay, good, thank you. So, so if the sponsoring organization and or the artist postpones an event to 2020, 2021 um, to a specific date um, and provides us documentation via usually email that they've done that, then we will en encumber the funds and hold it for them to be paid in 2021. So... That's our motion. So do I have a second? Yep, you have a second. Okay, um, so back to um, Joyce. Uh, aye. Okay. Uh, Rich? Yes. Um, Jenny? Yes. And George? Yes. Adelia? In favor. And Rena? Yes. Okay, and I'm just curious, um, I think it's passed unanimously. Um, when people see faces on the screen, 
Are they in the order in which I called them, or does everybody see a different order? <laughs> so. It's a different order. Okay. Yeah, uh, so everybody sees a different order. That's interesting. Um, okay, great. So we're fine with that. So we've had two two votes to one give the money in cases where the work has been done, Tim Bone Agment, and the second to uh, agree to specific postponements to 2021 and to hold the money for them. Um, now we have a few other situations, um, you know, we have $650 that did not get used for the Waitley Historical Society's Spring Festival, which was canceled. So Adelia, do you have any issue with that being thrown into the kitty for 2021 to be used for next year's grant proposals or uh, was there any talk about paying anything to Sarah the Fiddler or the Face Painters or Tom Tining the Snake Man? No, no, we had not planned on paying them, but I thought they would come under the, our previous vote that we could just push this into next year's, put a new date on. Oh, so you <laughs> might, yeah, it could be if you want to have the same artists next year. At this um, point, I, yeah. I feel that's the thing to do. Okay. So yeah, then then it comes down to if somebody says that they don't plan to do the event in 2021, then what do we do with the money? Can we just put it into the pool? Put it into the pool, it sounds so like. We have to go back into a, a, yeah, a treasury. Right, so it'll Are be up to the historical society what they want to do in that case. Um, George, what would, what did you say? Oh, so I mean, from my understanding of our 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 recent vote is that it's up to Adelia, or it's up to the Whaley Historical Society, apparently in this case. Yeah. Send you an email saying we intend to postpone uh, these performances till next year. Correct. We'd appreciate you know being you know, funded at that time, whatever they need to say. Right. I mean, if they didn't want to have say Sarah the Fiddler, they wanted to have a different artist, then they would have to do an a different Yeah, proposal. apparently, yes, I guess that's right. And if they don't use the money for Sarah the Fiddler, we'll find out in November or December when we entertain the new grant proposals, right. and that money would be back in the pool unencumbered for right. 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if we need to vote on that specifically. I would yeah, say yeah. in the case of Friends of the Library, the summer music series, I guess we can just encumber those funds too, although they never did tell us what artists they had in mind. They usually just take the money and hire mm -hmm. whatever artists they want. Just that mm -hmm. part Is there any chance that's going to actually occur? The summer music festival? Yeah. Um, you know. Theoretically possible to be six feet apart on the lawn. If it's outdoors, I think that's their best chance of having it, but I don't know if they're inclined to do that. So, and we don't get to decide that. No, I know we don't get to decide that, but my point is we don't really know what the outcome is of that yet, do we? I mean, I, we, yeah, maybe right. we do, we're in July, but. No, there's two things I wanted to mention with that. Their um, Library that. Board of Trustees has postponed all library events until okay. further notice, okay. number one. Number two, should we have a vote on whether the Friends of the Library decide to have their summer music series in fall? some outdoors if the weather if it's september and some indoors if it's not would that be something that we would want to discuss and vote on well that sounds ominously like the pre vote we just took i mean all they're doing is postponing the event yeah and right I, and i think we've we've always if it's within the same fiscal year and someone just postpones it to another date fine yeah i think that's they have I mean, a way they, to get reimbursed. 
if they say they want to turn the summer music festival into the February <laughs> music festival, you know, I, that's just pushing it into 2021. So it falls under the vote that we just took and they would just re be required to send an email to you. Right. Although we did give them $200 for a winter music series. Well, I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm talking yeah. about maybe they'll combine the two or something. I don't know. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I think it mm -hmm. feels like what you're saying is that it's just kind of a variation on the po postponement theme. Yeah. I agree. So, so maybe we should change the, well, yeah, we can add additional no, no, motion no, that we accept. In the fiscal year, that's already allowed. Yeah. Right. right. So if they're just postponing summer to fall, we don't have to take any action. Right? I think that's right. Okay. So with that said, let me just go quickly over my notes. I think I've covered all the um, requests and questions that we've had and can get back to. Um, to the friends of the library that yes, they can, um, we will keep the funds for next year. But I don't know if I should tell them, it would probably destroy their chances of getting more money for next year's summer music festival if they postpone this year's summer music festival, then next year well, they can't expect getting an additional 600. But we don't have to say that. No, that's to. another meeting. That's a totally different meeting. Right. Well, that's the meeting where we decide next year's grants. Right. So, okay. So I think unless people have additional questions. You know, I just have one sort of administrative question, which I'm embarrassed to ask. I should probably know this. But there are these cases where sometimes we're dealing with an organization like the Friends of the Waitley uh, Library. And there's other cases where we're dealing with organizations as sort of a sponsoring entity for an artist. <laughs> and when, when the event actually happens, do we always pay just the artist or do we often pay the agency and then they pay the artist? How, how is the, okay. the money flow actually work in these various cases? Okay, um, the Waitley Library and the South County Senior Center have the artists actually submit the grant application okay. and then the artists submit the request for re okay. repayment. They call it a reimbursement form. And okay. so we sign off on that. And the process procedure now is we only need one signature instead of two because of COVID. We shouldn't have to be driving to each other's houses and having other people sign. Um, but if they've done the work, that's fine. In the case of the Friends of the so Way the Library. Just, let me just interrupt. So in that case, we're cutting a check to the artist. That's right. Okay. We don't cut a check to the library. All right. um, in That's previous right. years, they did the application for uh, the artist, but then they had us cut the check to the art. Oh, okay. Artist. So the artist is always the one that gets paid, except for the Friends of the Waitley Library. Well, no, um, we reimburse the Waitley Historical Society because they cut the checks to the artist because they're oh, sometimes paying part of the money, et cetera. Um, oh, so okay. that makes it easy for us. But in the Friends of the Waitley Library, we only cut a check to them after they show proof of canceled checks to enough artists that, okay, we see you've paid out oh, more than okay. 600 bucks, we'll give you your $600 uh, check. Okay, I didn't know that, all right. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, we don't just give them a check and say, here, do the, with this whatever you want. It so has could, you to back up, could you back up to the Waitley Historical Society then? So in the case of somebody like Sarah the Fiddler, um, Will, you, did you say you'd, we'd cut a check to the Waitley Historical Society and the Waitley Historical Society would cut a check to Sarah the Fiddler? You know, maybe I'm confused, Adelia. I think actually the Waitley Historical Society has the money go to the artist directly. Is that right, Adelia? The way, the way it has happened in the past is when you have fully funded the artist, we fill out the form and the form goes, the, the money goes directly to the artist. 
Right. In some of case, the cases, you have underfunded, in other words, only partially funded. We feel the person has to have the complete amount. So the Waitley Historical Society gets the partial funding from the cultural uh -huh. and then we cut the check for the full amount. Uh -huh. Thank you. That clears up a lot in my mind. Right. And in my experience, that's happened only once, I think. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It can but, happen both ways then, it sounds like. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions or discussion? By the way, you said there were, I just want to make sure I understood one little detail. So you said there were two cases of people who had already requested postponement to 2021. You said one was John Root, and who was the other one? The other was Friends of the Waitley Library just asked uh, what happens to the grant money if oh. they um, oh, okay. don't So it wasn't Roger years. Tinknell who, 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 it wasn't Roger, Roger Tinknell was not one of the cases. No, but we just want to be prepared because things have been postponed so many times and we don't even know if we're going to be able to do anything in yeah. 2021 it's helpful to have the um the vote of the council uh if it turns out that nothing can happen this year right, um, right. these artists and their sponsoring entities may ask well can we do it next year right okay that clears it up thanks great okay so I think with that in mind, um, no, if there are no further questions, I move to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. Roll call. Uh, roll call. <laughs> oh, roll call on that too, Joyce? Oh, okay. Yes. Joyce? Yes. Rich? Well, you know, yeah, of course. <laughs> Jenny? Yes. George? Yes. Adelia? Yes. And Rena? Yes. And thank okay, you. I